Advanced 360 Education is a data-focused digital marketing company with proven positive outcomes for educational institutions. To learn more, visit a360education.com or call Anthony Espinoza at 310-704-5369. That's Advanced 360 Education. Welcome back, everybody. It's your time to add up on the Edup Experience podcast, where we make education your business. That is like the 500th uh, time I say that. I say that now in my sleep while I eat breakfast to my wife. She hates it now when I say your time to add up. She, she does not like that. Uh, she thinks I'm trying too hard. Anyway, um, I, I'm, we're back here again, Dr. Joe Salustio. And uh, we've, uh, as you guys know, we've passed like 150,000 downloads. We're fast on our way to 200,000 downloads, uh, 200, downloads of this podcast. Um, what I really, really love about what we've done uh, at the Edip Experience, I'm going to self-promote here for a second, is I feel like we've made it accessible um, uh, to, we really made it a podcast for the people, so to speak. You've seen um, a, a myriad of guests through community colleges and private colleges and public colleges, whether it's presidents and provosts, uh, CEOs of ed tech companies, CEOs and VPs of business and industry and big companies like Walmart and FedEx and and others, and then we get we end up um, having a, a guest co-host come on, and these are the the guest co-hosts that we have come on are people that are doing the work. They're college presidents. They're um, they're uh, student success professionals. They're aspiring leaders, and we've made this. And, and I think that's what makes this podcast so special is the organic nature of the questions when you put two people or three people together and you just have a great conversation about higher ed. And when I was talking to somebody today and you know what, there's been so much doom and gloom in higher ed over the last couple of years with COVID and with the future and declining enrollment. But there are so many positive things happening and we need to talk about the good things that are happening. And that's what we want to do here on the Edup Experience. Speaking of good things happening, I, uh, I have a guest co-host and guest combo um, that these other podcasts uh, will dream about. They'll dream about, never get. Uh, we will get them here on the Edup Experience podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, first, let me bring in my guest co-host today. You've seen him before. He's been a guest. He's been a co-host. And then I actually ran into him in person uh, recently in Denver, Colorado. And we have a, uh, a selfie that we took that I've yet uh, to release. In fact, maybe we'll release it. Uh, when this episode comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Dr. Kurt Steinberg, and he's president of the Montserrat College of Art. Kurt, welcome back. Great to be here. I love uh, hanging out, and the Ed Up experience is uh, really kind of taken off. We really appreciate all the work that you're doing, Joe, to uh, make this kind of information and talking about higher ed accessible to everybody. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And it was great to see you in person. Right, we don't get a lot of opportunities to see uh, people uh, in person, but it was great to see you in Denver and catch up with you. And you're doing incredible work as well at Montserrat. How are things going? Everything's going well. We're in uh, we're full up for the summer with all of our activities. Uh, just a different mode of being, and we're already starting to get ready for the fall. So excited to keep moving and hopefully uh, landing in a well, let's call pseudo post pandemic space. So. Ooh, you fingers, said here. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. You said <laughs> a lot. Um, and then, of course, our guest today. Um, <laughs> he admitted to me he listens to this podcast while running on the treadmill, which means he must be in great shape because we've done 450 episodes. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Brent Fitch, and he's president of the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Brent, what's going on? Hey, Joe. Great to be here. Thanks so much for the invite. Certainly looking forward to it. And, and uh, you know, you're doing some amazing things, the Ed Up experience, all the guests you've had. And, you know, I I'm waiting for you to create a knowledge base where we just type in a question and there's the Ed Up experience answer. Whoa. Whoa. Elvin, if you're listening to this, why don't you get on that right away? Right away, Elvin. Um, that's a pretty good idea, actually. Now that you saw it has been thrown down there, Joe. Yeah, well, well yes, we're writing a book. Has. We're writing a book, which could be kind of like that, right? I mean, yeah, we're going to take all like the that. themes there you and go. put yeah, them together. Exactly. Of course, uh, commencementthebook.com is the website, but of course, I'll stop self-promoting. We're here to talk about Brent Fitch, president of the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, more specifically the students and the work being done at the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Brent, level set for us. Tell us what you do and how you do it. Yeah, sure. So I... I I was appointed president in March of 2020. So right when the pandemic happened, um, I took over the 
the range and working with the team and it was all remote you know certainly our students were um, shifted to online that work campus and then we have a large base majority of our students are online students anyway so we were prepared to really support them but had no idea what what we're up against unfortunately we we navigated um certainly the the challenges and pivoted quite well um you know we're approaching our 60th year um as a college um we're located in colorado you know and if i had to paint the picture for you we are a beautiful campus um if i look to the west out of our administration building i look at the rocky mountains and then if i look to the east i'll look actually over our quad to see the skyline of denver colorado so it is, it's a great place um i have been in that building um i i believe because I, I worked in denver colorado for a career college for seven well, 12 years and uh, we did stuff with uh, uh rocky mountain college of art and design in fact i've known a bunch of people that have worked there and probably came and worked for me at one point and yeah. i mean there's been you know it's a small world for sure in in the world of higher education literally a beautiful location in denver is this a destination campus brent is this a destination for for people to come to colorado and be a part of uh of uh, rocky mountain college of art and you know that's what we're, we're we're trying to be a destination campus i mean denver has grown so much and we're so involved in the community you know just actually just last night um, one of our instructors is working with a, a group downtown and literally displayed student artwork on the side of one of the towers downtown so Amazing. we can't be blessed to, to we we're certainly blessed to be i love those uh i'm certainly blessed to be uh be a part of the part of the community and uh you know they just open they open themselves up with with welcoming arms and you know since the really since the pandemic um you know things were quite closed working with schools and so forth so now we're just getting back in and like kurt mentioned you know summertime is really about preparation for fall so a lot of the work we're doing is supporting our students who are you know just continuing to to uh to attend classes during the summer but you know expecting a, a really nice uh, fall enrollment. I'm going to pass it to Kurt, but I do want to ask one more question, because I think when we're talking about art and design and you're talking to the normal human, um, we are thinking that somebody's standing at a blank canvas uh, with the paint all over their face. What does art and design mean when you talk about art and design at the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design? When we say that, what are we covering here? We're covering art and uh, illustration and, you know, what, what are we covering art and design? Yeah, you know, it's interesting as, as I've become learned about, you know, certainly what our students are doing at, at RIMCAD. The, the work really starts out, you know, from a, from a hand-drawn kind of a, a, a portfolio, if you will, that students submit before admissions, and then they get really entrenched in how the, the technology technology enhancements have have really kind of I, I think you know really transitioned the the the, uh, the work being done you know these, these creative students come in with a dream and then they're um, exposed to a, just a ton of things that they can broaden their horizon with you know and like an interior design student I was looking at a senior portfolio, and the design aspect of it alone, like she designed a hotel and this computer animation actually allows you to walk through the hotel that she designed. So it, it really takes from that drawing concept that's you know somewhat uh, architecture or observe, observational drawing and the product that is produced at the end. And it's so tangible that people can see it. That's what's nice about working with these students is that you can actually see the progress because we're trying to display it as much as possible, but you know, you can. You, uh, it, it's just amazing to watch the the student progress through the courses. Kurt, over to you. Sure, uh, Brent. One of the things that I think is um, really makes your your college stand out in in the in the area of art and design education specifically is, I think, um, uh, is the online component of of what you do as a percentage of the total instruction uh, time and what you offer. And I would love to learn a little bit more about um, how you support students, uh, how you uh, are doing on retention in that space and then the graduation and, and, and then also uh, what are their, uh, what are their, their work life 
uh, sort of experiences after they go through those programs. I just, you know, most, the majority of art and design schools, I think are just dipping their toe in that, are a little anxious about online programs in these particular disciplines. And you just seem to be thriving in that space. So I'd love to have you talk a little bit more about that. And the big thing is about supporting the students and being able to achieve learning outcomes. That's always the pushback, which I'm a, a little wary of personally. So I, I was really excited to talk to you today about all this. Yeah, so there's a lot to unpack. So let me um, first start with just kind of how I view things in my experience. So I have over 25 years in kind of online program management. I've worked on both sides of the desk for institutions as well as for a third party provider, um, Blackboard actually. So I was consulting for them as kind of a, um, how to wrap services around you know students, not only just on campus, but online. I know that's your question. Um, we take an approach where we try to personalize the experience. So we have, um, besides the traditional support team that you would think of in admissions and advising and financial aid, we go one step beyond that and really kind of think about how the faculty member would interact with these co-curricular supporting positions. Um, our chairs get involved with, with you know, kind of educating um, the support people on what students are going through. We've had a, a you know a, a, a lot of work recently in mental health and a mental health counseling department. That group has transitioned to really Zoom sessions, personalizing those as well. If you know one of our students needs to talk to someone, I think that's really critical. And then for the online coursework, I think it's really important that the student feels connected. They continuously tell us how can we connect outside of the classroom. So in our library services and our embedded tutors, we have at points of reflection. And if instructor can actually have a almost a reactive point of reflection where they can bring in one of these kind of team members, if you will, to help in the support. And I think finally, you know, on the student outreach, um, we try to we try to incorporate a one-stop shop. So a concierge, if you will. So here's my question: where can I go? Because online students, they're not at campus, they can't walk around, they don't or even our campus students don't want to walk around the campus and try to figure out where to go. So we have this kind of one stop where they can ask a question and then we respond versus them trying to figure out where to go on campus to help them, whether it's curricular or co-curricular um, questions. Nailed it. Thank so I, I, as a follow-up to that, Brent, uh, I want to know a little bit, because you do both. So it's great to find out sort of the data on, on persistence, um, where do you see, is there a difference uh, in some of the key indicators for the students and their progress um, on campus versus online? Or, uh, you know, what have you found uh, with Rocky Mountain? Because you've been doing this a lot longer than a lot of people. So I'm really interested to find out the kind of data that you've uh, you've been able to mine on those experiences. Yeah, Not sure. much longer. He's only 23. Yeah. I mean, it's been a <laughs> short career. Uh, um, Kurt, I think it's, uh, I, I think, you know, one of the things is you have to understand the data and not just what the outcome is. Yeah. Uh, you really have to look at the demographics, what the challenges are. Are they first time freshmen? You know, we're seeing a, a, a growth in 18 to 24 year old students now taking online courses only. So that brings on a whole host of other challenges. So we're trying to incorporate in, you know, a, a different type of orientation that is tailored to those basically students who might even move to Denver, but take online courses and then come to the campus to use one of our labs, whether it's a, you know, photography lab or, you know, one of our you know, wood shop working, you know, just to get the hands-on experience as well. Um, the retention rates are, are, I think, mixed based on um, a few factors. Um, one, if they've taken courses before, we know that, and we see it, that the that students that come in to our online courses have, that are successful have kind of the ones that are successful have a higher retention rate than the ones that haven't taken courses before. So you almost have to tailor the approach to two. And then our students really take, I think it's, we, we are on a mission to make it interchangeable where you can take a campus course if you're close, which we have a lot of students who in Colorado who are close or an online course. So you know, I think that's supplementing and blurring the lines between the two because our campus students are on our LMS. So, you know, I don't, I don't really see it as a different student. I see it as a, 
okay, here's how I want to accomplish the course. Mm -hmm. We know that you can print out um, the, not only the lecture, the, the discussions, but the work being done. And our instructors have to be great to teach the modality. And they also have to be great at observing and critiquing the work. That's a combination we try to find in, in our instructors. You know, one of the things that that I think does is different, and you can um, you can uh, comment on this, Brent, if you would, um, is the expectations that change when you move from on ground teaching to online teaching, because I feel like the student expectations change, right? Um, I don't know. You think about something like office hours. What's an office hours for an online student? It's twenty four seven. They might be doing their um, even if they're 18, they might be doing their homework at one in the morning and they have uh, a computer breakdown. So who's going to support them? And what is the 24 seven technology service look like? And how do, how does somebody answer a phone if they make a phone call? Um, and then you, you kind of distill that down to faculty and somebody who's posting something in an online environment where if it's on ground, they could submit a paper and maybe they're waiting for it to be graded. But if it's online and it's a discussion board and it needs a response, that faculty turnaround sometimes is 24 hours. It needs to be 24 hours or else the discussion is stale. It, it, the learning doesn't take place. So there is a difference in speed, maybe, is the best way to say it. What do you think about that, Brent? Yeah, I think it's synchronous versus asynchronous and understanding what services are offered and how those are offered. And, and one thing we've learned through the pandemic is we can record the synchronous lecture or the synchronous discussion and then post that and then the student can download it at their time. And then ha them having the ability to ask questions is really key. So, you know, students want the information today, right now, and so that they can move on. So that's the challenge is personalizing the experience, trying to put as much content as you can. We've invested a lot in our, in our instructional design uh, group to make sure that, um, that we understand the difference in how students want to digest information and how they want to participate in the conversation. And one size does not fit all. And, and, and when you think about how you satisfy an online student, you, you almost have to personalize it, understand where the data is, compare and contrast, and then try to um, have instructors understand what, what red flags look like when students, you know, they, they struggle with a concept. And how can we interject at the moment that they're struggling to help them bridge that because that causes anxiety. Anxiety causes the student to withdraw because they feel like they can't do it. And they're, in the, they're alone in their office or in the basement or, you know, so that we have to provide them a network as well to feel like they're connected. And I think that part and then connecting instructors as well because they're in their office, they're in their basement as well. So a community of, of, of creatives I think solves a lot of the problem. It's just our ability to execute and connect them. Community but, of creatives. I think that's a, was that a white paper? So it's, it's coming white paper. <laughs> one of the, uh, one of the uh, things that I'm always interested in is I, I'd love to find out how you approach it um, is uh, the area of critique, which is the, the main mechanism of, of learning uh, in a, in a studio based, uh, you know, art and design education. And obviously it's a lot more of an intimate back and forth conversation, not just with the instructor, but with colleagues, right? With, with fellow students, uh, which I think is also what's really special about, you know, what, what you and I are doing in our prospective campuses um, is it's, it's not a top down, it's almost a, a community learning process. And so how do you facilitate that at, at, at Rocky Mountain? Well, you know, somebody told me once that Going to art and design school is like going to medical school because you have to put yourself out yep. on a limb and people are going to tell you exactly what they think. Um, and, you know, so, so that being said, and I love your, the notion that you brought up around students as well, help each other yep. with artwork and, and our students are certainly, you know, we have a, our community is kind of housed together with a, a common app and there's constantly displaying their work on the app and our social feed for, for this critique. Now in the classroom itself, you know, particularly online and in the class, we have to be um, pretty structured in our feedback from a matrix perspective and then provide them exactly, um, you know, this consistent critique in the form, in, the, in a consistent form from course to course so that they know exactly 
what we're looking at and what improvements that they could make because it is really all about progression. You know, the artisan designer, we take them, they, they all know what they want to do. We try to help them create the path of that initial portfolio in the beginning, four years later is the graduation exhibition. And we're all seeing that body of work over the four years. Advanced 360 Education is a data-focused digital marketing company with proven positive outcomes for educational institutions. Advanced 360 Education does not simply rely on instinct to make assumptions about audiences or key data points. Rather, through data intelligence, client strategies take on a higher level of effectiveness. To learn more, visit a360education.com or call Anthony Espinoza at 310-704-5369. That's 310-704-5369. That's Anthony Espinoza at Advanced 360 Education. Great. Got a follow-up there, Kurt? Yeah, just a quick follow-up. It's also in the, if I could go to, this is an example. I'm going to use animation as an example. Obviously, it, it's the, um, you know, the, the software and the hardware that goes along with producing high-level uh, professional uh, finished uh you know, animation uh, and visual communication, you know, projects. Uh, how, how does Rocky Mountain support their, uh, their online students uh, in being able to sort of uh, to access and to be able to have the equal experience uh, when it comes to those kinds of things? Uh, so I think, it's, I think through, through the platform and then just through the number of subscriptions that we have based on, based on the, you know, particular course, like, you know, I'll talk about uh, interior design as an example. The technology we use is Revit. So in Revit, it's 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 a way that students can continue the, you know, particularly online, you know, they might post what they handwrite in the beginning of their program. And then at the end, you know, it's a essentially a, a, a collection of work that is in Revit. They go from, you know, understanding uh, concepts in architecture all the way to, you know, designing light in a particular room in the platform. So, you know, I think again, and, and you might, um, have, you know, certain, certain examples of this as well. It's the students, you know, that, um, that really go into depth in their projects and want more. Um, I think online, our ability to scale and personalize it through the technology is really important. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys know uh, a little bit about this podcast, which means that, you know, it's time for a little mid episode break called this is higher ed word association with your uh, participants today, Kurt Steinberg, Brent Fitch. This is where I give you a word related to higher education. And you got to give me the first group of thoughts, words, phrases that come to your mind. Don't make it short. Um, like anything in higher education, stretch it out a little bit um, so that we can make a good episode out of this. Uh, and Kurt, of course, I'm going to start with you because Brent's the guest and he gets a little bit of preparation time. And I'm going to give you guys um, a, a no time to think, no time to think about your answer. Here we go. Are you ready, Kurt? Yes, that was a nod, head nod. Okay, here oh, we go. Oh, yes, do it. Re- recruitment. Um, all right, go back to the rules. What am I reading to? <laughs> the first words that come to your mind when I say recruitment. Oh, uh, yeah. My my brain went blank. Pandemic and recruitment caused you to freeze up. Um, we, we had a moment. Kurt's brain. Error. 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 Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, uh. Recruitment. I'd say uh, demographics. Remember, you can't make it short. What do you mean by demographics? Uh, demographics, I'd say, um, sort of trying to bridge our gap as we start to see the the dip in the population over the next five years, and how are we going to bridge that gap? Brent, recruitment. Yeah, I like exposure as a better description because it's really about um, it's about what what story you could tell from an institutional perspective and how. You know, you are telling the story about what our students do and allowing other students to make a decision based on 
based on what they see, which, you know, for art and design schools, you have a lot to show. Yeah, I guess show the show and tell of art and design schools is probably one of the most important things, right? Which leads me to my second word, Brent, of course, this goes to you, and that is brand. Brand, yeah. Um, reputation is, is, uh, is the, to me, the, the descriptor. And, you know, I think it's really important that, um, you know, as a parent with um, college age students as well, the, the, the reputation of the school has to, um, has to be front and center, but also the experience that you're allowing your, you know, your child to go through and making sure that it's a, a place that's safe, a place that they can learn and they can experience great thing and, and, and mature. And then for our non-traditional students, I think it's really important because it does lead to, lead to their career. And, uh, you know, brand really counts and reputation really counts when you're interviewing for, for a school because they know what you went through. Okay, Kurt, brand. I'd say for uh, brand, for me, it would, uh, similar to Brent, uh, but I, I'd go and, and talk about the, um, what's the outcome? Uh, do you have a return on investment? Uh, is the school uh, set up and respected enough to be able to, you know, help you meet your goals and to make it worth the expense? Because as we know, higher education is expensive, no matter how you cut it or slice it. It is one of the issues that we have to deal with. Um, but it is incumbent upon the schools to be able to create a situation where they can get good jobs and they can pay back some of those loans that they've been able to do and they can have productive and creative lives. Okay, so this last one, I'll do a little bit of a setup because uh, I, you know, Kurt, we, we had a conversation in Denver and we were talking about what's happening at Montserrat College of Art. And uh, but by the way, I am in Denver right now, Brent. I should have literally driven to wherever you are and we should have done this in person, but that's my fault for not thinking ahead. Like, wait Next time, Joe. Next time. Yeah. I'm literally sitting in Wheat Ridge, Colorado right now. Um, anyway, so, um, uh, so Kurt, we talked about, um, we talked about the future. And we'll talk about that in a second, a little bit more when I ask Brent to uh, quote himself on what the future of higher education is going to look like. Um, and then Brent, you started your job here at uh, Rocky Mountain in the middle of the pandemic. So the word I'm going to ask you for, about is leadership, Brent, and it goes to you first. Leadership. Yeah, thanks, Joe. That's a you know that's one that we take very seriously because I think it's just it's it's about responsibility. And, uh, you know, I'm just so proud of, of what we were, have really have accomplished over the last few years. And it's, it has nothing to do with me. It's all about the team and what they do creatively to support students, whether you're a faculty member or somebody who's, who's taking care of our facilities. They know the most important thing that makes this place alive is our students and the things that we have to do. So I think leadership is part of, you know, certainly setting the stage, but also getting out of the way. Brent, leadership, what's it mean to you? Brent, I already went. Kirk, Kirk, you Kirk. Went. Kirk there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so my my uh, my issue from earlier is infectious, Joe. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> so um, leadership for me, um, especially as it, as it has to do with what we've been through the last couple of years is... Um, uh, again, uh, I have to say about uh, being able to bring the community together, uh, being able to have everybody working together in the same uh, direction for the similar outcomes um, and listening. I think a uh, big thing that I've spent a lot of time is listening about people's fears and concerns, but also listening to their suggestions and, um, and not having it go alone, but having the community come together. And that's really why we've had I think a great um, experience in these last two years under very challenging times. I've seen, um, at least for me, uh, uh, a group come together that uh, shares the same set of values and communicates in a very similar way, which has been the backbone of the college for a long time and uh, really came, was challenged and came to real fruition during the, during the challenging sort of crisis management we've been having to do over the last two and a half years. You know, there's probably some some uh, dissertation studies that are going to be done on how leadership has changed in higher ed or 
in any other industry as a result of the pandemic. It's raised the empathy to the nth degree and how we treat people, how we Absolutely. understand. My kids will pop on here from podcast sometimes when I'm on the podcast and there isn't a single thing I can do about it. So we just make it part of the episode. And I think that's, you know, as we look at remote work, if we return to campus, these are all things that we're struggling with as leaders. I'm glad that you can hear from two amazing leaders today on this latest in episode episode of Higher Ed Word Association. <laughs> So Brent, I'm going to ask you one quick question, then I'm going to pass it over to Kurt. By the way, Brent, you won. Uh, no co-host can ever win. Uh, win. And uh, so you won. Uh, you even know. with that, I think you won. Yeah, and even at the did. beginning, aside from your uh, brain freeze, uh, Kurt, uh, yeah. we, we we feel like Brent uh, did a good job there. Absolutely. Yeah. Certainly, the reason that uh, you know I come on the show is is to chalk one up. But you know, to me, Kurt and I are both winners because we have to meet each other face to face on the, on the, on the Zoom. <laughs> it's for the better. We like it. Um, so, Brent, you have a deep, deep, deep uh, experience in enrollment management and student recruitment and trends related to um, student choice and preference. How is that? Because we talked about higher education in general and ascending to a presidency, and there's multiple pathways to get there. One of the most common faculty, uh, dean, provost, president, so on. Less common through enrollment, although that's being more, that's becoming more common, I think, as we see enrollment plummet um, across different industries, somebody goes, okay, you know what, we should put somebody that has some enrollment experience here uh, at the top. Um, even less uh, uh, student services, financial aid, but enrollment is one of the up and coming ways that I think that uh, uh, boards are choosing and saying, hey, we want a president that's really got a business mind thinking about enrollment. How has that helped you? Uh, all that experience in enrollment management helped you prepare for for this role at uh, RIMCAD? Great question, Joe. You know, I, I think you take a little bit from each of the leaders that you've worked for, and I've worked for some some great ones, actually. Dr. Peppicello is on, uh, I think also has a, <laughs> has a, uh, has his own podcast under the Ed Up umbrella. Yeah. So, he wanted to, he wanted to shine bright Bill, my buddy, Bill Puppicello, of course. He did. So, you know, I think that's, that's really, it really helps. And, you know, um, working uh, through for a number of large institutions, you just get exposure to all kind of different areas, but also all kind of different challenges. And, you know, I think you take those with, with a grain of salt, roll up your sleeves and just wait for the next time somebody taps you on the shoulder. So that's been kind of the mantra that I've used and that has gotten me access to kind of the whole institution. So, you know, preparing for this role, I think it was just a culmination of a lot of different experiences that I can put together, you know, and, and you know, working for a, a, a smaller, you know, um, school that's in a, a really specific category it's very nice when you can, you know, have a personal conversation with, with the head of facilities on how do you, you know, uh, permitting as an example <laughs> to, you know, to your question around enrollment management, where it's a science. Um, so, you know, I, I think that although we're small, we try to act big from using data, from using our, um, certainly our third-party vendors, from uh, the, the, the people we have relationships with to um, help the institution navigate um, the, the opportunities, but also navigate the challenges that are, that are in front of us. Yeah. So picking up on that last piece on challenges, um, in general, you know, love to hear from you what you think uh, are the challenges uh, in the next two to five years for higher education. And then um, kind of talk to us a little bit about how you're approaching um, those challenges at uh, at Rocky Mountain? Yeah, the, the you know the challenges ahead, I, I think, is um, quite a few. Um, you know, there's a lot of conversations right now on on is a degree worth it, um, and you know, are, are students really you know in it for the long haul, the four years, the six years, or however long it takes somebody based on their you know their their work or they're just a full-time student and the like. So I think that'll continue to be a challenge is making sure that the value is in the in the program. I think the other challenge is how do you continue to work with those, you know, 
for me, it's the skills that people learn in class have to be the same things that the, the, the hiring manager is interviewing for. And if you miss the mark or you fall asleep at the wheel and not having those, those conversations about bridging the gap, you, I think you're already behind. And so you, the second part of your question is, what are we doing about it? And we've really, you know, invested a lot in, 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 in our ability to have career services at the forefront. You know, our students are, you know, working for companies. And one of our students who was a graduation speaker um, last month is, works for Adobe. He's an evangelist. So he's literally on the screen every week um, hosting thousands of people walking through Photoshop. So, you know, how do you have somebody that graduates with an illustration degree and then 20 years later is an evangelist for Adobe? Um, you know, how do you set that path? And I think it's leading by example, show, having other students and alumni lead by example, and then constantly talking to people in the, you know, I'll call it the design industry, the certainly the, the, the art industry as well, and, um, and really trying to bridge the gap with your programming. 100%. That's how sure we're, we are that there are going to be challenges and how sure oh. I am people like Kurt and Brent will overcome them for their institutions, right? I, mean, I think that we got a, really, a lot of really, really, really smart people in higher ed that are going to figure this out. Um, and I think the main barrier, as some of us are finding, is bringing people along um, to, to technology, to speed, the consumer is changing every single day and their expectations are different. And, uh, you know, I, I think the challenge is understanding that we can get anything we want fast. You want a, um, uh, you want a new hair gel, you order it on Amazon. You want a new uh, a skateboard, it comes on, well, Kurt, you ordered a new skateboard recently. I, I know you did. Uh, you want a skateboard, uh, it, it comes uh, unless it can come, some, come same day. So how do we bring that same level of speed, service, and future to an institution that is grounded in hundreds and hundreds of years of tradition and, and ways of doing things. And that's what we all, I think, all face for the future is how we serve the ever-changing mind of the student. And it's it's a dilemma, but we got to figure it out, I think. What do you guys think? If I could real, real quick, I think one of the things I, I love about uh, your college, Brent, is the fact that you are sort of trying to break that mold. And so to go with what you're talking about, Joe, is that as much as higher ed is uh, in general is entrenched in those things. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna speak heresy a little bit of my own space. And that is that, um, uh, is that art and design uh, program, both at comprehensive universities and standalones, uh, do have a certain percentage of being stuck in tradition even more than, the, than, than uh, general higher education. And so, you know, when I sit there and, and look at what Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design is doing, it's really kind of revolutionary, even though they've been doing it for a while. Um, and that's what some of my questions were about at the beginning is trying to also convince people that there are different modalities of this thing and that students need to have different ways to access this knowledge and information. And if, and if they don't do that, they're, they're going to shorten their lifespan as institutions. Uh, and so, you know, that's my feeling. That's why I was excited to be here today to talk with Brent. What do you think about all that, Brent? Consumer, speed, that whole thing? You know, it's, uh, we, we, unfortunately, we compete against the device. And if we don't use the device, then Nailed it. we're, we're going to lose. Uh, you know, everything is in that phone, is in the computer, is in the iPad. How can we, how can we, uh, I'll, I'll use the expression, go with the flow rather than try to fight it. Um, so, you know, even in the classroom, you have to blend the work. Um, it's just not all, um, you know, not all face-to-face, -face, not all discussions. We know that there's artwork to be done and, you know, and observational drawing is a great class where you have to draw. Um, but, you know, there's, there's the work beyond that that goes into really, you know, just using the technology and then being able to communicate because when they go, whether they, whether they're self-employed and trying to, you know, work as an artist, as a freelancer, 
or work for a marketing department and graphic design, you're going to be challenged. And the first challenge you're going to have is, can you keep up? Um, you know, and so we are trying to have students understand that that pace is important, but also trying to satisfy their needs with, hey, why don't you have this? Well, that's a great idea. Let's talk about it. Well, I want to bring attention to what I think is the quote of the episode so that I can hit this button. A -a -a attention. That is that we compete against a device, uh, said by Brent Fitch, and I think that is so mind-blowing when you think about it. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say it quite like that. Um, but you're, you're right, right? That is, we do compete against a device. All of, all of our expectations are set from our device. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Left me speechless there, my friend, which is, I promise you very hard to do very, very hard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, just trying to help Joe. Yeah. So, so Brent, um, as we close this episode, any more questions from you, Kurt, you have anything else you want to get in? No, I'm all set. I think he, he mic dropped on that one. The mic we're... dropped. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> there we go. Um, it's my new favorite button, by the way, as I edit. Anyway, Brent, so uh, what did we not say about RIMCAD that you want to say? Anything coming up, new programs, events you're speaking at, website, anything at all, take two minutes, plug away about the good work you're doing at RIMCAD. That if you haven't said something already, say it now. And two, what do you see as the future of higher education? Yeah, thanks. So, you know, we're just so. Uh, so um, blessed to be in the in the in the position that we're in. So certainly thanks to the amazing staff and faculty. They are hard at work right now, not only preparing for fall and our enrollment, but we're also hosting a conference in April um, of 2023 in Denver. Um, it's the Fate Conference, which is Foundations in Art, Theory, and Education. It's going to okay. be a great discussion, really um, on a, talking about the intersection of craft and, and pedagogy. So um, we, we're really um, excited about that and working hard to, to be the host institution for the, for the organization. The future of higher education, you know, I, I, I wanna say a few things and, and not to repeat what I said, but I think geographic connections matter. Mm -hmm. And the more, whether you're a school that offers courses, you know, um, face to face or you're exploring how you can, you know, explore, how you can expand your reach by offering online courses. Know that, you know, where you, where your students are, are important because they're representing your institution. And if you can connect them to where they live by whether it's employer and internship or another student, I think that if we can all figure that out as higher education expands and explores the, you know, this, this um, you know thing that has been going for going for quite a while called online learning. The the more we can make connections, the better. I think we will be at satisfying students, but also teaching them what they need to be taught um, as they go on and 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 make us proud of um, where they are going to be employed. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I would say another fantastic episode of the Edup Experience podcast. Um, Lots to think about there. Geographic connections matter. We compete with the device. You think about those uh, pretty pretty uh, impactful one-liners that you have going on there, Brent. You can pull old training out of those couple of things for, for anybody in higher ed, and they're so true. Uh, one thing is true that I love having Dr. Kurt Steinberg here along with me for the ride of co-hosting. There he is. Kurt, did you have another good experience on the, on the other side of the mic here? I did. It was great. I appreciate it. And I love uh, the Ed Up experience. I love what you guys are doing. Well, thank you, sir. Um, we appreciate you so much. And of course, br our, our guest today, uh, by the way, if you, if you could see his background right now, I'm assuming somebody made that somewhere, somehow. Brent, it's like a massive illustration of the campus, right? Or a campus. Yeah, quick story. So our founder, um, Philip Steele, his son, Mark Steele, is an illustrator and he's a board member. And Mark actually did a, a rendering of our campus um, quad. So that is, it, it is beautiful and we love it. And we actually use it um, to, uh, to uh, not only for, for backgrounds, but also to give for, um, you know, special occasions with students and so that they can remember where they, where they're learning and, and what they're part of our family. That's awesome. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. 
His name is Brent Fitch. He's president of RIMCAD, the Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design. Brent, did you have a good edup experience today? It was fantastic, Joe. Thanks for having me, and thanks for all you do for the higher education community. It is it's really, really just exciting and certainly impressive. I think I need to bring you guys along with me anytime I'm feeling down. I like you people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've just ed up. Effective marketing for educational institutions requires a dedicated partner that understands the complex, constantly evolving digital landscape in which colleges, universities, and career schools compete. The EdUp Experience podcast partner, Advance 360 Education, is a data-focused digital marketing company with proven positive outcomes for educational institutions. Advanced 360 Education does not simply rely on instinct to make assumptions about audiences or key data points. Through data intelligence, client strategies take on a higher level of effectiveness, whether the goal is driving enrollment, alumni engagement, or other educational marketing campaigns. To learn more, visit a360education.com or call Anthony Espinoza at 310-704-5369. That's Anthony Espinoza, 310-704-5369, a360education.com.